Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from, from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy cool we are live welcome to the podcast everyone Hi. and and the video cast and uh welcome spud for the third time uh after popular demand and great feedback we are gonna have to endure another frank and honest chat with spud <laughs> What can I say? And uh, am I am I the most frequent member now? Then you currently have you are you are you're the you most. Need some, you need some more friends, I think. I think that that's the that's the main. Yeah, uh, turning me down. That's the, the main issue. You need to you need to branch out a little bit. I mean, it's a bad time to branch out now, but uh, <laughs> when this blows over, mate, go and interact with some more humans. You can't keep coming back to me. Well, do you know the great thing now? Actually, is now I used to be like you have to come in and see me face to face for a podcast, right? Whereas now yeah. my whole, the world is my oyster with like this technology. It's great. Okay, yeah, you can you can definitely do that. But I enjoy the coffee at your place, so I will miss yeah. coming in and actually sitting and drinking your coffee oh, with you. Thank you. Not wanting to make you jealous, but I'm just almost finishing one right now. This one's straight from Colombia. Uh, no yeah. need. To be fair, I've, I've I've got some good coffee now, so I'm not jealous. I'm okay. You're fine. But when that runs out, right. I'm not have a conversation about jealousy. No, no. One, once this is all over, we'll do a proper face-to-face -face coffee again. Yeah, this please. How are you finding all of yeah. this stuff? Uh, it's. I think it's a little bit strange for everybody. Um, I think from my personal perspective, as long as you can understand that everybody's world is currently upside down. Um. <laughs> you'll be okay <laughs> like this isn't yeah. about you it's not, it's not about the individual like the globe is on is on a, on a bit of a, of a flip over at the minute so uh yeah. if that can give you some solace that yes we're all sort of uh upside down and everything's changed and it's all a bit strange as long as you bear in mind that this is for everybody then you can sort of try and continue uh to be as normal or as close to normal as you possibly can yeah, true. And I think realistically, as, as far as I'm concerned, it's about headspace, getting into the right headspace. And, and that's the first thing. This is everybody and not just you. So get yourself in that headspace and everything else will just feel a little bit nicer. Yeah. A lot of people are quite, they've let it affect them, you know? I mean, just, yeah. Yeah. I've been trying to let, you know, my motto has been like not to let, not to let things, not, not to let things I can't affect affect me, you know, like don't. It, yeah. Me. Exactly. Bingo. And I know, I, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's still a very harsh reality for a lot of people and it yeah. will be different for, for, you know, varying whoever you are, you're going to be affected by this differently. Some people are affected a lot more greater than others. Uh, and some people are almost unaffected. Some people can just carry on working from home, or be isolated home for a little bit. But that yeah. to some people might be a really big wave to ride. Just having to stay in your own home all the time is a big deal, uh, you know. And it goes all the way to like the NHS workers currently. Those guys are absolutely beating it. They they are riding a massive wave. But if that's their comfort zone and they they like being busy, then it, you know you just have to bear in mind that everybody's going through some weird stuff now, and it's still fresh as well. Yeah, you yeah know, any sort of it's hard to deal with once we've once it's settled a little and we know that this is normal now, then i think we can sort of push forward and, and start yeah. behaving ourselves a little bit that's true it's actually made me i've said this before but it's made me actually um be grateful for what we have i mean like we've got like delivery on tap we've got the entertainment you can pick between like a million different providers um yeah. the shelves are stocked like yeah. can you imagine if we were in like you know world war ii now or yeah, um, yeah, how Anne sure. felt when she was hiding in like one bedroom with seven members of her family for two years with just yeah. a pen and paper and a book yeah. so you know it's actually not that bad you know if you get the perspective, no. like, perspective on it um you know and then 
you know, with on, with online stuff like this, I mean, with you guys are still doing like the workouts online and, uh, you know, perspectives, everything. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it's, and this really goes back to when, like, think back six months ago when we could still go out in parks with each other and we could go around to each other's houses. We had a Christmas party in December where everybody got together and had things. That wouldn't yeah. be happening now. But it's really easy to see the details of what's happening. And I think you've hit the nail on the head there when you when you look at what you've got and what what could have been if, if this was happening 50 years ago or, you know, even 20 years ago. It would have been just a lot, lot different than it is now. Oh, so man. I having mean, a positive set is you know, the way to approach this. Hugely. I mean, like, even like to Disney have just released Disney Plus, right, which is their Netflix thing. Right, it's forty-five pounds yeah. for the whole year, right? Forty-five pounds okay. for the whole year, which is like a third or whatever of a CrossFit membership for a month or whatever, whatever mm. right? Mm. No, it's yeah. nothing. But I mean, but what entertainment? You can entertain yourself for like a million years on on, on Disney stuff, um, yeah. or you can go on Netflix for like five ninety nine a month, or I mean, you know, on YouTube for free. Um, yeah. It's just, there, there is, I mean, there is ways to entertain yourselves digitally, virtually, however you want to you see that. But there's also a really long list of other things you can do that are going to stimulate your brain. And this is, this is really the most important part of being on, on a lockdown, whatever that means. Stimulation. And it doesn't always necessarily mean following a YouTube video of somebody doing 100 push-ups in the living room. And I know that obviously as, as the gym, we are pushing out these videos for the people that want to do that. But that, that at the same time can have a detrimental effect on people. If their social media streams are of like gym enthusiasts doing gym stuff at home, that might not necessarily help somebody who's struggling with motivation to get up and cook a meal. You know? True. So there's other things that you can do that can help you motivate you to find a bit of normality and then that might turn into doing workouts in the home but for now having some sort of routine getting out of bed in the morning making breakfast having a cup of coffee and sitting down and focusing on something is really the most important part of of what you need to do and that's just mental health yeah. deal with the basic stuff and the complicated things like doing backflips in your garden will happen you know you'll get there yeah, but for now, figure out a way of like just being able to focus on something because that will really help your your mental capacity through these really dark times. Yeah, no, for me the hardest thing's been because I like I like routine. I really like going into my office. I like getting up. I like yeah. walking to the bus or the tube or cycling in, and you know, like I get into. I really like going in and working, and um, mm -hmm. and then suddenly I've got to be at home. And I'm trying to recreate and, and make some of the same like routines. So I'm trying to have a little walk in the morning, drink my coffee. And yeah. my wife works in hospital. So I've been, I've been dropping her off and then coming back and then make yeah. coffee and, you know, like getting into my, into my routine. Um, it's quite, it's quite hard. Like, you know, it's hard to get into yeah. routine. That bloody fridge keeps distracting me all the time. Yeah. I've just called my name. I was like, get out of my head. It's like just looking in yeah, yeah. and seeing what's going on. Yeah. And these are these are really the most difficult days. So I, I had a conversation with a pal who uh who was ex-military as well. And we're kind of approaching this whole thing like we're we're on a deployment. Yeah. We've yeah. kind of been through this already. Your world is now not what it was. Delete that. That will you'll be able to go home to that at some point. For now, you, you're locked into the same place. There's something that's trying to kill you every day. The food isn't the best options. You're not getting steak and lobster every day. Um, you've just got to make these choices. You, the fitness stuff that you would normally do isn't the same because you don't have the same equipment. It's yeah. essentially like you've been stuck in a forward operating base in the middle of the desert, and you've just got to kind of do with the best of what you've got. Yeah. Treat it like you're on some sort of deployment and you have no other choice but to do the job that you are required to do for now because at some point you'll fly home and everything will be normal and you can walk through a leafy green park and, and drink a cider in the pub in the summer. Definitely. What a great way to think about it. It's true. I was thinking, who was I, I was listening to some an ex-military um, guy talking about it and they were like, you know, the most important thing in, in war, and I've not been in war and you have, but it's like staying calm under pressure, right? 
if people yeah. are if people are shooting at you and stuff you want to be able to think clearly about how you can plan to get out and stuff right and i mean this is no different i mean you choose how you think about the situation right i mean right yeah treat it treat it like a hostile environment to a point because if you treat like if you kind of think oh well it's all right we're at home and i'm it's you know my local environment's all still the same it's really not you know if you look, it's really not the same it's not you exactly. you know you're not spending the a very small like an hour in the morning and a couple of hours in the evening before you go to bed your entire day is spent in this space you have yeah. to treat it like a space that you will eventually get out of by going to the pub and doing activities and taking the kids out to the theme park or whatever it is going to be that will happen again at some point we're not going to be here forever if that's three months if it's six months if it's nine months whatever yeah. treat it like you don't know what the what the end date is yet but it's still a hostile environment and you have to change and everybody can do it you can change your mentality to survive in a hostile environment but you just have to do that don't treat it like you're just at home and everything's okay because that's when it yeah. really crush you down for people that like have never had to do that and they're currently like in that dark cave of like they're scared they don't yeah. want to catch it is there, is there any like kind of easy things that they can just do yeah i know like obviously i'm saying that because, <laughs> but i had like extensive training <laughs> you don't just like <laughs> yeah, exactly. and then you're just off to afghanistan like i, I i've been in the military for 12 months through like extensive training before I'd even gone to Africa. And even when I got to Africa, I was like, whoa, this is wild. So yeah, I understand that me saying that might be a bit like, that doesn't carry across to human life. Um, I think just, just understanding that it's not your normal comfort zone is very important. Yeah. Currently, your what you think is is your comfort zone isn't your comfort zone, and it might feel like it is for now, but it might get to the point where you just resent your own living room because you're in it so much. Yeah, and that can be really detrimental. And the people that you're having to spend time with, you've got to figure out a way of being with these these people. Um, and it, it's almost like forget the relationship that you're in with them to a point. Obviously, it's still like wife and kids, or girlfriend, boyfriend, mother, father, whoever you're isolating with are still that person to you, but there's still got to be some sort of separation at some point. Yeah. For instance, like me and Jazz have to spend some time with my mum and, and this is where we're isolating. We're lucky enough to have the camper van so we can just disappear off into the wilderness if we need to. But yeah. I'm still doing her own thing. I'm still doing my work through the day and then we'll come together, we'll eat lunch and then we'll go and do our own things again. Yeah. And I think that's really important to do that. Spend some time away from the people that you're in the, in stuck in the building with and just think about the stuff that you're going to be able to do at some point you can't do it now and don't be like oh i wish i could do this this and this that is the worst thing you can do oh, i wish we could just go and get an ice cream or i wish we could just you know see all the friends and have a big party stop thinking about that now because that for me if i was on operational deployments and i was thinking that way that is going to drag out so much yeah. If I'm thinking I need to get up in the morning, I need to make sure that my kit and equipment is clean and serviceable. I need to make my brew, feed myself, clean myself, and then I can get on with whichever job in hand needs to be done. Yeah. And, and that's really what you need to do. And, and if you need to write that down, I'm going to get up at this time. I'm going to make my coffee at this time. I'm going to blah, 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 blah. At least you've got something to follow. Write it down, yeah. see it. And then when you don't do it, you're like, uh, I didn't yeah. follow that list. You're keeping like so you're keeping like a well structured kind of daily yeah. plan of what you're going to do. Just ba even if it's for the first two hours, even after if, if like after ten o'clock, it's just free for all. You do whatever work you get, you know, distracted by YouTube, whatever you need, that's fine. You do it. But if those first two hours of your day, wake up at this time, go for a jog, do whatever home workout you need to do, clean yourself, feed yourself, caffeinate yourself, and then just get on with your daily business. If you can yes. hit those first two hours of your day, mentally you're going to be like, I can do anything now. I've, I've nailed that first two hours. I'm ready. You've won. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing fitness wise now? Say again, sorry. What are, what are you doing like kind of fitness wise now? Uh, a lot of running. Running? Just running outside? Yeah. 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 Running, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, I, I kind of need to get my run times back down again anyway. I haven't, since, you since it's been. Right, Kind of, I went deep into CrossFit and ran my own gym, so I've not, I've not done like a best effort mile and a half run for almost a decade. Wow! Wow! 
because yeah. I got out of the military in 2011. Okay, so, so, not... so it was a lot of running in the military and then you just like sod all this running and... Well, when I was in there, it was like heavy carries, a lot of running distance. And I know that it's changed drastically now. They're using right. a lot more functional things, the testing capacities for soldiers. Right. So it's almost like you, you fit the test now, we're almost like CrossFit workouts, just to see uh, how varied you are across the board. Um, yeah. Like when I was in the army, I never did a deadlift. Never, wow. never did a deadlift. Never, never learned how to squat properly. It was just like, how fast can you run and how much weight can you carry while you run fast? Yeah. Which is good. That's my job, you know, my job is to move quickly with heavy weight. And, you know, there's no point in doing other things, or so it seemed at the time. But, you know, since since this and seeing the, the potent effects of functional training, it doesn't matter what your job is. Um, I know that now using functional fitness, even for soldiers, makes complete sense. So yeah. now there's like inter-regimental CrossFit competitions. Oh, amazing. Different regiments between them and they come together and they have like big throwdowns like boxes working out yeah, against yeah. each other just different regiments and it's awesome nice. it's, it's really cool to see nice. so yeah for me i'm kind of running because i don't have a home gym i don't have kit and equipment yeah. uh you know i've got i've got bits and pieces i i could quite easily drive to the southwest and, and surf but i think that's selfish uh i don't you know you don't want to be taking yourself into these really beautiful environments where the local people can't go anywhere and do anything you know no. i think it's quite self you know, flood the beauty spots um especially when they don't have the resources to deal with yeah mass and outbreak. the virus as well maybe you have it exactly. yeah you, you've got it if you're asymptomatic and you then surf and there's 20 people in the lineup the amount the amount of people that those 20 people can affect is drastic oh. it's massive so yeah. for me when they say self-isolate i'm just going to isolate yeah i'm going to the meet with jazz or on my own we're just going to run and run and run and run and see and see how good the run time can be when all this blows over <laughs> we can't go wrong running i mean running's the best you need no you need no equipment you just need to okay. get out yeah you can even run better i mean yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of uh i mean we should really be taught how to run properly you well, should be taught that. to yeah. strike the more efficiently how to how your biomechanics work when you run, if you've got any existing issues, how that's going to affect your run, which can, you know, there's many different things, but down to its bare bones, go for a run. If that's a jog, that's a walk. If you want to find a big hill and walk up and down it 20 times, do that. You know, as long as your heart and lungs are working, you you're doing something good. So for me, the weather's good. Uh I rode the motorbike up from London to Stoke yesterday, like 200 mile journey, which was awesome in the sun. Um, now I'm just in a really good place mentally to just go outside and just get running. If the sun's out, go outside, do something. Yeah, it's amazing. What do you think of this? Um, these online coaches seems to be like a million that have sprung up all of a sudden. Overnight, everybody's become a fitness professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think they? What do you think overall? Everybody's uh, everybody's Instagram feeds are just buff people doing stuff in the living rooms. Which, yeah. you know, on one side, cool. Yeah. You give yeah. people a lot of, of options. But on the other side, if I'm not that driven to kind of work out in my living room and I'm just seeing loads of ripped, fit, beautiful athletes doing stuff in the living room, I'm going to be more tempted to just like swipe it away, close the whole thing down and be like, oh, I'm not doing that because I'm not going to look like them. Yeah. That's what the is, like I love CrossFit because you're going to go and have an interaction with a coach who can offer you something. Yeah, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, like if your dog's died, go to CrossFit because your coach will give you something that's going to help you deal with that. Yeah. You looking at someone who is awesome at push ups, do a thousand push ups. I don't, I don't, I, I, yeah, it's got to be a little bit more guided than just follow me, do the, do what I'm doing. Yeah. It's got to be, for me, fitness is about empathy. You've got to have an empathetic approach as a coach. So if you are coaching and you're saying, this is this, this is this then I'm not sure how that transfers. Um, yeah. So we are running Zoom classes out of the gym so that at least the members can interact with us as coaches and I can have a little bit of say on how they're moving, offer them variants of the movement standards that we're doing, just like we would do in a regular CrossFit class. And this goes back to trying to make your environment as close to regular as possible. Yeah, You're yeah. still in that environment, but if you've got somebody guiding you and giving you some fitness advice, 
take it. Yeah. No, definitely. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Like the first session was a yoga on on, on Sunday, and yeah. and I did it. And uh, there were like I think twenty five people or something that they dialed in, and yeah. and you recognise everyone because you've trained with everyone at some point. Um, yeah. And it's, it was just hilarious. And now you guys have started the uh, the CrossFit sessions, which are yeah. cool. I'm dialing today. Um, it's also familiar. And also, yeah. um, you know, when you know people and you've trained with them already, it's just, just a sense of like, oh, we're all in this together. And you feel yeah. like quite like, yeah, you know, shared experience thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And once all this is over and we're back in the gym, I think the community is going to be even stronger. Yeah, well, like- I think. And that's the main point, right? Trying to keep the community together and trying to yeah. give them some sort of bonding agent to to keep them together for now. Uh, yeah. And I don't think there's, I don't think it will last forever. If we are locked down for three years, I'm not sure that we'd be doing the same thing. No. But I think for now, while spirits are still relatively good and there's still an opportunity for us to build those spirits and make sure people are feeling good, um, we can keep doing it. But also back to your your army stuff. I mean. The, the, the friends and camaraderie you must have built with people that you were at war with yeah. must be life, lifelong, you yeah. know, like... Yeah, I've still got big friends big now that, that will call me just to just to talk, just to chat and just, you know, yeah. make out of each other for an hour. Because yeah. I think that the friendships that are built in dark times tend to be the stronger friendships, you know. 100%. And you can really kind of see who your friends are in, in dark times. If it's always, like, nice and sunny... And you don't really have any challenges you've not really been tested as a friend i think it's a good chance now to show who you are as a person and and it, it really shows that when you see the people are going down and pushing old ladies out of the way to get the last toilet roll we're seeing who we are as people now um we're getting yeah. a good opportunity to, to see that divide and and they'll know that they're bad people <laughs> yeah, yeah. People like, like, you know, like, what do you do when right what do you do when no one's looking? it's like what do you do when no one's looking well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's now just, the world is watching. Just uh, yeah. you know, behave yourself. If you are a, if you are a bad person, just try and be a bit less bad. <laughs> if you know that <laughs> you're the one who's just bought all of the meat out the store in the morning, just you know, behave yourself a little bit. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, you've got the the good people who are doing good stuff and don't require recognition for it, and you know, they're volunteering volunteering in their local communities. It, through various forms um you know obviously you've got the nhs volunteers thing that's just opened up um yeah. there's there's m- many different ways that you can help your community and usually when you do something good you won't get recognition for it and you, you'll kind of do it behind the scenes but you shouldn't need recognition for it you shouldn't be doing things so that people can see you doing them no no, no definitely but you you get something out of it i mean like you get sure. the, you know you feel good about yourself you know, yeah, it's not- that will definitely help and it goes it always goes back to how what's your mental capacity like in dark times how are you yeah. how are you dealing with what's going on around you and helping the people who need them in a safe way obviously don't be going out and like giving out free hugs in a coronavirus <laughs> but if you can you can go and pick up <laughs> yeah, yeah if you can go and pick up you know groceries for a local elderly lady and drop them off at a door and give her like kind of knock and run then yeah. do you know if you can if you can volunteer to be uh, like a blood delivery biker for the nhs do that you know there's loads of different ways across varying platforms that you can offer some help to somebody Definitely. and i'm not saying that if you're not volunteering you're a bad person don't get me wrong if you've got stuff to do and you're getting on with it cool just don't be a bad guy don't don't yeah. go and soak up resources don't risk yourself don't go and take up all the stuff that needs to be spread thinly you know there's plenty of supplies in the supply chain uh just follow the rules for a little bit follow the advice loads of stuff i mean i popped into the uh there's a great little sh- um i think they're turkish but a great little shop next to next to crossfit tuffinal park box. yeah i love that place and yeah. I, do you know what we've talked about this place before on the podcast yeah yeah all it's the the morning I mean, those those potatoes still have mud on them. I mean, yeah, they're yeah. brown, like you know. So they're all they're, and they're fully stocked. You know, they're yeah. letting people in like two at a time or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and that's across across the country. You know, all of these places are stocked with stuff, and you don't need yeah. to bulk buy. You can just yeah, you buy really them. don't. You really don't. Uh, I think we're starting to realise that now. People people panicked. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, it's like, oh, look, everything's restocked again. I don't know why you would think that they wouldn't be restocked. All you've done is just probably wasted a load of fresh food. You know, there's a lot yeah. of this, this, the saying now, like the waste collection companies are saying that the fresh food that's being wasted is close to what it would be around Christmas because people buy so much food and just throw it away. They're not eating it. So just stop panic buying, like buy the things you need, do a weekly shop, go out once a week and buy the food and you'll be okay. Yeah. And you can still eat well as well. You really, really can. You really can. And if you, if you're living on basics, there's ways that you can, you know, put those together and make, still make good food. If the yeah. local places run out of meat or fish or whatever you would normally go to, fine. Like make something else. Yeah. You'll no, be definitely. okay. You'll be all right. The really cool thing I found, um, well, it's two things actually. I mean, I'm trying to drown out all the negative social media rubbish and I've muted yeah. most of my WhatsApp groups now. Yeah. Um, but I feel so much more sociable now. Like I'm, I'm speaking to my mates, like good friends that I used to speak to all the time, but just life gets in the way. And you, you know, like if you're speaking to them once a month, you feel like you're doing well. Now yeah. I'm like, I'm not speaking to my mates at 8.30 in the morning with a coffee. I'm like, well, I haven't spoken to you at this time forever. Yeah. I've like, I've like, I've like got much closer and I've spoken to my mates a lot more. Yeah. And it's interesting that it's taken like something like this to do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're right um and I, I, I like again it can go it can go both ways if you're feeling more much more sociable and interactive great wonderful but bear in mind there's probably someone in your friends group that's maybe feeling a little bit like they're in the hole yeah yeah so i'm having a conversation about somebody with somebody about this the other day like reach out yeah just just ping them like we are we are sociable people me and you as individuals are yeah. social like our jobs involve talking to a lot of people on a daily basis having conversations so we're kind of good at it we've probably that's probably a personal trait we've always been good at it and we've found yeah. something that we can do that utilizes that a lot of people don't have that and we True. take that for granted so if you're one of the social ones and this goes to everybody who's listening to the podcast now if you're one of the social ones reach out to the people that you speak to normally and you've maybe not spoken to in a couple of weeks because they might not have spoken to anybody in a couple of weeks that's so true it's so true i mean you can even just uh, even on your whatsapp you can broadcast all of your contacts and be like hey i just mm -hmm. want to check in and find out how yeah. you are are you all good yeah and don't even make out like it's a broadcast just send an individual message yeah. out to everybody are you okay yeah. everything yeah. all right yeah. yeah do you need anything you know just something like send them a joke a meme or something that you found on the internet like they'll appreciate yeah. it yeah send them a picture of yourself before and then we can send one after the lockdown and just <laughs> yeah yeah uh and if instagram has anything to do with it we'll all be like hulk hogan by the time the coronavirus is blown. <laughs> that'll be interesting hopefully we'll be a, yeah i mean if, if the instagram is we're going to be like so ready for the summer i mean or fit nation shredded <laughs> oiled shaven just yeah. in, in like trunks ready to go, man and we'll just go straight okay. on holiday we're definitely going to see what people's real real hair color is because he's going to be able to get down to the head <laughs> yeah yeah fortunately <laughs> mine's just like continuously getting grayer and grayer and i'm not making any effort to like dye it out but well I'm, at least I'm you're just getting thinner like mine but my, no mine's getting bigger mate mine just keeps growing <laughs> it's so thick i go to the hairdressers now and just have it thinned out it really needs like oh. i'm just going to grow it see what happens and then i'm going to i'm going to look like the dude from the big lebowski Let's see how I, mean, I shaved today, actually, but I might try and grow like an aggressive hipster beard. Just Do to it, see. Mate. If you've got the capacity, just give it a go. Just, you know, that get some like beard oil. I really want to see that. I'd love to do that. I might do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I had, an interesting, I had a, like a weird thought last night. I've said this, said this um, yesterday, but, you know, like everyone's, everyone's been talking about sustainability, climate change. There have been yeah. conferences with governments and everything. And it feels like the planet has just said, uh, you humans are not doing a good job. Go stay in your room for a few months yeah. Yeah. and whack this virus out. It's yeah. stuck two fingers up to everyone and made the sunshine. Yeah. And it's just giving the planet a break, which is really interesting. Yeah, the planet is getting a breather. Um, breather. And I, I just, I think like, it's unfortunate that it has to come to this, but I've always said that we, the human race is the problem. We're all the way. Like, yeah. just get it, get it done. Get us all off. Give it back to the animals. Let the dogs just kind of run free for a bit. <laughs> It'd be just, interesting to see 
just let it just let it recover but it would be yep. really interesting to see if people's habits change once this is over or we just revert back to i wish i had danger with my family danger is the, re the revert back could be like twice as bad because they've not had it for a long time and they'll just kind of go absolutely mental yeah. um so it would be interesting to see how we continue this but i think there's a there's a lot of people who are having the same thought process as what you've just said it's letting the planet reset we're having a bit of a breather the sun's come out the rivers are running a little bit cleaner um you know there's the the air quality in china is improved because no one's driving around yeah massive the fact is a shot <laughs> Yeah, everything's just closed down. Yeah, factories have shut down. And yes, we, we're all losing a job. But, you know, the, the main point is the, the place that we live now is just a bit happier for us to be inside. Yeah. Let's just yeah. do like two or three months of being inside and let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah, but you touched on it. I think like, you know, the virus, fine. I mean, I'm not that concerned about getting it and stuff. And I'm sure I will if I haven't had it already. But the mm. job thing, you know, like people losing their jobs and that, that economic thing that's tough yeah, yeah. That's yeah tough. massively massively tough and it, it's and it goes right back to the first conversation that we had today is everybody's getting affected by this yeah everybody yeah. big guys the little guys everybody in between everybody will be hit by this in some way or form yeah so yeah. we can discuss you know the economy we can discuss the stock markets if you want to but we don't need to do that i think as long as you just bear in mind that this is something that we're all going through Reach out to your friends if you've not spoken to them for a little while. Reconnect with people that you maybe should reconnect with because you've got the opportunity to. And just, you know, at some point, we'll all be in the pub drinking a pint again. 100%. What you realise is whether you, you know, whether you've got a big mortgage, big rent, small rent, whatever, like no one's, no one's very far away from having nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like really, you lose your job, um, yeah. and you might have like a massive house or or, or a small one bedroom, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Like everyone ultimately is in the same spot. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so and, never, uh, and really, that goes to never just rest on what you've got. Always yeah. just you know, not necessarily have a, a a contingency plan or a get out plan, but just be sort of grateful for what you have. And if you do have, you know, big mortgage, kind of means you have got a big house and you're doing okay. But just bear in mind that something at some point might just sort of knock it all off a little bit and it's just going to be turbulent yeah 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 I've started, a, uh, it's dreadful. I've started a gratitude diary oh nice yeah it's great I mean I've, I've got this guy called Gavin Drake he's a psychologist he did a little session with us and so I've got this diary and I just remind myself what I'm grateful for yeah. and if you do that at the beginning of the day I mean wow you can just you know I'm living in the UK um mm -hmm. i can eat some food i can you know loads of loads of really cool things it puts everything into perspective like yeah. life's not so bad you know it could be worse there's always someone in a worse scenario yeah for sure 100 you know? percent. so what um have you got like a few takeaways that someone can do um just to make them feel and think a little bit better if they're going through like a kind of cave moment uh, I think utilizing what you just said about the gratitude, it doesn't necessarily have to be written down, but like daily mindfulness about the situation that you're in and the positives that you can take from what you're doing will help everybody. Yeah. There's nobody that can't do that. You just sit and breathe deeply for a couple of minutes and just maybe not even focus on anything, but just let your mind wander a little bit and think about the things that are happening and try and pick a positive out of what you're doing. If you can pick a positive out of what's happening every single day, the wave that you're riding won't seem so big. And it is, it is just a wave. It's like surfing. Like I love surfing, but this, yeah. this is just a big wave that we're riding. And you don't, you don't decide where you go on the wave, all right? The wave is something that from a storm that happened 2,000 miles out to sea, it's energy that was sent you've managed to get on that wave you're going to ride it the wave will peter out at some point it might crash on your head there'll be another wave behind it you don't know how far away that wave is we're just riding a wave man ride it out try and stay on your board for as long as possible and if you fall off the board get back on the board again so true so true what a what a beautiful place to end yeah see mentally we're all in the sea now we're all in the ocean the sun is shining we're surfing <laughs> sun shining got a vitamin d we're riding that wave yeah, yeah. Right. Thank that's, you. that's that's great. Keep
definitely. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast again. And I will see you online for a workout very soon. Yes. Thanks very much. Have a good day, mate. Thank you. See ya. Bye.